obviously there has been a repricing of Federal Reserve expectations for 2022. That has weighed heavily on this equity market. And yet you say you have a glass half full view on equities right now. Why? Well, to your point, there are some overheads on the mar overhangs on the market, but we really are still cautiously optimistic on the U.S. stock market, and really the reason is fundamental. So if you go back to a broad array of macroeconomic indicators, what we see is they continue to remain in solid growth mode with uh, uh, continued increases in what we see as far as the data. And then if you look bottom up at what company uh, earnings are reporting, we've actually had a very nice fourth quarter. Order. And so we've continued to get a good number of beats, both by percent as well as magnitude. And so that gives us uh, continued confidence that those underpinnings for stock market prices are still remaining intact. Lisa, what kind of rate of return do you think I should be expecting this year? And what will I have to invest in to get it more specifically? Well, when we look at the overall landscape, again, we see good operational results continuing both on the big picture macro basis as well as the micro basis. But that being said, if you just look at the past three years, we really had three years of very elevated stock market returns. So going into this year, we continue to expect uh, an up year overall for the market, uh, but we would uh, caution clients to realize that the level of gains may not be the same as what we've really experienced in the recent past. Obviously, a lot of the gains in the recent past have been concentrated in the growth stocks, Lisa. Is there anywhere within growth you'd be comfortable holding on to right now? Well, we continue to actually see a broad variety of growth as attractive at this current moment. We see both some of those secular growth names, even though more recently they've cut off, come off some of their valuation highs as attractive, simply because they continue to have those long-term tailwinds behind them in terms of changes in business spending, changes in consumer spending. But on the other hand, as we continue to reopen and the uh, recovery continues to become elongated as the economy opens in batches, we still see opportunity for cyclical growth as well. Lisa, there are some in the market that are growing concerned that we are going to see a growth shock, that the Fed is going to make a policy mistake, that it's going to over tighten, that the economy is going to slow and cl slow quite significantly. Maybe not this year, maybe at the back end of this year, maybe in 2023. The market is a discounting mechanism. When do you think we should start thinking about that as a concept and how would you price it in? Well, to your point, we certainly have an environment that's going to be tougher overall this year uh, for stocks than it was in the last year, simply because of what's going on in policy. And key among those, to your point, really is monetary policy. Whereas uh, we all know the Fed is really moving from one of accommodation to more normalization. And as that happens, that is going to be somewhat of a headwind for stocks, leading to our more modest, positive outlook for the U.S. equity market. And so that is something we'll want to continue to monitor. The Fed is definitely uh, walking a tightrope here in terms of continuing to monitor its pa the pace of inflation and how it should respond to that. And yet, to your point, maybe not putting on the brakes too quickly in order to potentially bring down growth. In an environment where there is that growth concern out there, does cash have any role to play in a portfolio? Generally, we advocate really being fully invested in assets like stocks or bonds that will really provide return over the long run. It's very difficult to be completely out of the pool or in, a, in the pool uh, at any one point in time. When uh, assets rise, they can do so very rapidly and very quickly, and it's hard to catch that rebound. So we really advocate continuing to stay invested in your major risk on assets such as stocks and bonds and real assets. Were you surprised by the price action in January, Lisa? Well, certainly we've been expecting some volatility throughout, and uh, it really is on the back of, again, shifts in really what the monetary environment is. Again, that creates, a, you know, a really a more difficult air, uh, type of environment for stocks to outperform. And we also knew coming into this year that given the very strong corporate performance in 2021, that there would be tougher year-over-year -year comparisons for, for companies. So add those two things together, and again, we expected more volatility volatility as investors navigated the developing data. But again, overall, we're still glass half full on the U.S. stock market.